one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Uh, art and contemplation have something to do with each other, and I think the production of works of contemplation uh, would be what an artist does. So it's not a matter of when you talk about role, sometimes that word is used as role in society or role in the city or role in the city of man. But actually, uh, a real role, which is like a vocation or a dharma or something like that, is not your role in any particular society society as much as your role in the universe. And I think the, an artist's role in the universe has something to do with producing these objects of contemplation or of, of immediate devotion of... Word. 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 A word, a word, a word. One word, two words, one word, two words. If I were a bird, if I were a bird, I would fly to the ends of the sea. If I were a bird, if I were a bird, I would fly to the ends of the sea. The sea, the sea, the sky, the sky, the sky, the sky, the sea, the sea, the sea, the sea, the sky, the sky, the sky, the sky, the sea, the sea. Light of light, light of dark, dark of light, dark of dark, light, light, dark, Dark, light, light, dark, dark, after light, light, after dark, dark, after dark, light after light dark land circle land circle sea circle sea circle Sea, 
circle, sea, circle, land, circle, land, circle, leaf, sound, leaf, sound, wave, sound, wave, sound, leaf, sound, leaf, sound, wave, sound, wave, sound, There's so many things about living in grace in Patmos and also even around the Mediterranean, things like that, that all together, but living on an island, living in a quiet place, all of it helps you. If the place is quiet, if the climate is good, if you're not always having to fight noise and uh, weather that, that uh, is too cold or too hot to, to uh, live comfortably and where you're not always having to fight that, that helps. Also, I think living in Greece, if you like to, if you're interested in a sort of, in basic experiences and basic, a basic uh, vocabulary, um, it helps to be in a place that's natural and that has <clears throat> in the nature, has all the uh, sort of classically symbolic um, entities, all, all the things that, that make up the world that we think of as a real world, as a human world. Um, if you were living in a place that didn't have any sky, you'd certainly miss it, or didn't have any earth, or one of these things. This, but in Greece, and on an island, you see the earth, and the sky, the sea, you see trees, and you see even the trees you've read about in the Psalms, for example, and in classical literature, you've, you see olive trees, and you see all kinds of things that are uh, it isn't just a matter of there being a part of classical literature, but I think that all of those things have become symbols in human thinking, so that um, they extend even if even if it's if you're part of a family that's been uh, for generations living near the North Pole, you still are working in your in your collective unconscious or somehow in your unconscious mind. You still are working with the symbols that. Uh, first were elaborated and understood probably in the me Mediterranean or in something like the Mediterranean world, so that you're back to roots of all, uh, uh, of a lot of human, or at least of Western experience, and it's close to a lot of Eastern experience too. anyone who is going through his own mind and clarifying things and can write them, he will be, clar he will be clarifying them for other people because he's, uh, he's articulated a number of things that they're working on and he brings them a few, can bring them a few steps ahead in their own search. And, uh, and then their reactions can bring him a few steps ahead in his search too. And if they, if they are finding something in it and they have reactions or questions or whatever it is that happens, the, the uh, one helps the other. Uh, but I think that if people are valuing writers and artists, it is because they think they've achieved a degree of articulation in this search, and they've had the time to do it while other people are working at other jobs or being 
positions or all kinds of other things. These people are working with, with words or with forms and are uh, clarifying uh, a particular part of human experience. And, um, and it, it's valuable for that. Um, it, it, it hardly matters. The, the history of a writer's life doesn't particularly matter to the person who reads his book. I mean, if the, if, uh, if the writer um, had a few moments of clarity, and from those moments of clarity, uh, he has something to give to another, to a reader, uh, what else happened in, in this man's life really is not particularly important. He's, the, the writing itself, or the, the work of art itself, when it is a good work of art, I think is, this is only one way of talking about it. I know an artist who doesn't like this way of talking about it at all. But uh, uh, the idea of writing good art as good medicine, uh, it, it actually, for people who need it, for people who can, can use it, it can be very good medicine. It can, it can clarify or can, uh, can uh, help the, the health of the, of the individual who takes it. And it, not all medicine works for all people. And, uh, you know, can, some of it can, same thing can be bad for, for someone. But it, uh, I think that when people value art and uh, the reason they do have museums and libraries and things like that is that they do see it. They even unconsciously appreciate it as something that actually helps life, and in that sense is, is good medicine. Searching for you, but if there's none, what am I searching for? Still you, some sort of you, not for myself, am I you? Need I search for me, for myself? Is myself you? I know, capital self. Is that you? Is it me? Why search? I seem to be built to. Search dog, search hound built that way. That's me. I know me. Do I know you? Do I at all? Have I had some signs or flashes? Any clues? Was that a clue? What one? Anyone I can have had or think I've had or imagine myself to have had in times past, or even now as I ask. Is asking a clue? Is wanting to know what you are, who you are, any proof that you are, that you're there? I think lacks I don't know why I call him Lax. I always think of him as Bob, but I'll call him Lax because everybody else seems to. Uh, is interested in, is basically interested in searching and searching for something. The something is beginning, beginnings. I think the word, his use of, his search back for the word is an illustration of that, but other things in his life confess it. Uh, you know, he was a very sophisticated young man when I knew him first. We were, I was editor of the Columbia Review and he was editor of Jester, uh, right after Reinhardt, Ed Reinhardt. And Reinhardt was a big influence on him too and that, that it also has to do with beginnings. But when he, but when Lax left Columbia in 1936 or 37, um, he faced uh, the world of success in journalism, uh, 
uh, in writing and so forth. And yet once it was clear that he could be quite successful, uh, he was very able. Uh, the New Yorker loved him. Sean loved him at the New Yorker. Uh, and he could have gone any place in that direction. But he withdrew from that. It was not at all satisfying to him. And it was rather strange and unusual because he had the gift, the worldly gift, the gift of uh, what? Being sophisticated, I suppose, in the, in the um, journalistic modern sense, uh, knowing his way around. Uh, but there was something else that was driving him. And it was a, it was a, it was a desire to, to, to be, to find something better than the, what the modern world offered. Not only better than, but different from. Oh, well, I think that Bob always felt writing was his vocation. I don't think there was ever any question in his mind. I don't think there was a, probably a moment when he didn't think he was going to write. That's my impression. When, perhaps when he decided that he was not going to take to, to write commercially, not going to try to earn a living by his writing, may very well have been when he went to Greece. May have, may have just then decided that there was just no way, just as I said, for him to be wearing the right kind of suit and the right kind of wristwatch in order to earn a living at writing. I think the only thing I've done, either purposely or consist some, with some consistency, is to um, practically just to, to keep writing, keep writing into, into notebooks, and not uh, get concerned about too many other things. Uh, and I think. Something like writing, for one thing, writing, the whole world, in a way, can pass through your mind while you're writing. You're not going to be unconcerned about things that are going on in the present world or in the past or in the Hittite civilization or in civilizations that may come. They're all completely, if your mind is open, they can all walk in whenever they like and go through and be considered. And, and if you feel like talking about them today, you can talk about them. But it's just deciding that if there's any way I've got of dealing with anything that interests me, whether it's in internal or outside or at any part of time or, or, or in any part of the globe, probably the only way I can deal with it uh, is through writing. There just aren't too many other things I could do um, and that, that, that I'd feel at home with. So I may just as well keep writing, and if today is the day to write a, a manifesto, then I'll be writing one, you know. But but uh, if it's not, uh, then I'll write something else. But the writing is the thing for me to do. is a way. The way is not a way. The way is the way. The way is not the way. There is only one way. There are many ways. The one way is many. The many ways are one. The many ways are many. The one way is one.
the way can be found. The way cannot be found. It is good to find the way. Can it be good? Can it be good? Never to find the way? Uh, in baseball, when a pitcher is uh, throwing the ball and his intelligence is not there, I mean, he's not thinking, how am I going to throw the curveball? It's completely reflexive. It's become a part of his total um, athletic organism. So that when he's in the act of throwing the curveball, the intelligence is the act. That's as close to Zen as you can get, and that's the way Bob is. Um, without being able to stand aside and say, I am now throwing a curveball and I can give you a lecture on it. And I suppose um, Zen is uh, the best way of trying to describe how in some of these short poems of Bob's, It'll just be just the pure act, like that little poem about the dog. Are you a visitor? asked the dog. Yes, I answered. Only a visitor? asked the dog. Yes, I answered. Take me with you, said the dog. We spent a lot of time talking, and we just told stories, and, uh, and uh, I just really think that he just, from the time he was really young, he had that experience, that writing was, the process of writing was his reality. And he's, at times he has been really kind of, uh, he's concerned enough, he's serious, he's a serious writer, so he keeps all this stuff, as you know. And, uh, but at the same time, it's the actual event that lifts him or deepens him or, The moment and the thing you are doing at the moment make a unity. The moment and the moment's activity are one. Attention and practice. Practice and attention. Always the same few things, always different, the same few interests, aspirations, engagements, aspirations I aspire toward, move toward, long for, try for, climb toward, reach out for, keep in mind, keep as a goal, See as a good, afar off, up the road, up in the distance, the future, a desirable thing, always the same few things. Are they illusions? Even if they were, they would be necessary. You long for something you can't see. But if you keep longing for it and moving toward it, you see more and more of the sort of thing you'd like to see. You long for something that hasn't yet come into view. But if you keep moving toward it, you see more and more. More and more things come into view of the sort you long for. It seems to me that if you had, say, a basket maker in a community, in a, in a small tribal community, who was a very, very good basket maker, made lots of baskets, and was now 180 years old, if all of his baskets disappeared or had disappeared, that would be of no particular importance. That would just be a, a material thing that, that had happened. But if that man was still alive and still knew how to make baskets, He'd be a very valuable person to the community because he could still teach people how to make baskets. And so the process of, of making them will go on and whatever baskets serve in the community will, will still be preserved. So that it is really to 
the process is the important thing and what the process teaches you. It all has something to do with talking to yourself. And uh, if you're talking to yourself one way, if you're talking to yourself in short poems, that's one thing. If you're suddenly talking to yourself in long paragraphs uh, and you're used to writing down whatever you're saying to yourself, then, then you're suddenly into, then you're into long paragraphs. It doesn't have anything to do with me anymore or with the idea of a of a set form, a recognized form. Uh, you know, a carpenter makes tables, and tables are are recognized in society as something that everyone needs. You know, everyone needs a table in his house, and so on. Uh, and I don't have that feeling about these things I write. I just, if if I get a, a particular flow or a set of words that seems interesting to me, that, that uh, seems to respond to something I've been looking for, then I write it down. And that has nothing to do really with, it doesn't have anything to do with publication or what forms have been before or anything else, if it comes in a particular form that, that I can understand enough to put it down on paper, then I'll, I'll do it. And that would be, that might be a new form for me. If I suddenly really wanted to say things to myself, if I wanted to sum things up for myself in sentences that, of words that all began with the same letter, suddenly that seemed like a good idea, I would do it. Uh, but now it seems to me that it be either might be monotonous or ridiculous or something like that, and I wouldn't do it. I'd do it some other way. I'd like it to... I think you're writing sometimes something that you'll be able to remember clearly, call to mind clearly, so that it's like an adage or a proverb or a saying or something like that. You put, you, you put the words in a way that will be easy to remember, and for that reason they may have rhythm and they may have uh, an image or a symbol in them that, that makes them easy to remember. And so that, that gives it a form. But the idea of trying to write something because no one has written sonnets lately, and, and you write a you know you write a you write a sonnet or you write some known form just to fill in a you know um, to conform to a tradition, uh, I wouldn't be interested in doing that now. Anthony got a hook in his finger today, his index finger, he showed me. What could he do about it? Just had to pull it out, said D, smiling, not unkindly. He showed it to me, and I said, you'll just have to pull it painful. Brought some flesh with it, too. What about the bleeding? Wasn't there a lot, I asked? No, he dipped it right into kerosene. That's the medicine. And it stopped. How old is Antonio? I asked. He's 80, said D. At least 80. He's been a good fisherman all his life. Calm and good. Never gets excited. You're lucky to have him with you, I said. It's just the two of them in D's boat. They start out at five in the morning when the weather is good, when the sea is navigable and come back, usually in mid-afternoon, seldom enough with anything.
painter, a poet, writer, a prophet even, is um, valuable to the community is just in the fact that without vision, the people perish. It is, it is one way or another, uh, the artist is, is someone who keeps, uh, keeps the vision alive in various, in very many ways. And, um, and so that what he's doing, if he's, if he's, uh, if all the practice of his art helps him in the preservation of the vision, of a vision valuable to the community, whether the, whether the community values it or not, is not his concern. In uh, that, that, uh, but if he's able to produce and, and uh, sustain his vision through his art, um, then he's doing his work, even in a community sense. A creature that, that uh, a creature in a hostile situation who can't see is going to be in, in a difficult situation. Uh, you need the vision. Vision is seeing, really, and it's just seeing seeing the path ahead, not in the sense of of just foretelling the events tomorrow, but the direction that things will take. And uh, it's a I think it's a biological need, a, a, a survival need. The the reason they they build museums, and you can get grants for art projects and things like that, is that somewhere people do sense this need for vision as a as a survival need, and so they honor priests and prophets and and uh, artists and things like that, at least as types, as a as a function, as a role in a society, and. Uh, and they build museums. Uh, a good society will build museums just as, as willingly as they will build hospitals. Or isn't death, said the spider, it's transformation. A fly is flying along through the air. He's a fly. He hits a filament of my web. He's still a fly, but a stopped one. I scramble to his rescue, and he becomes, if not a spider, at least a part of one. The port was longing. The port was longing. Not for this ship. Not for that ship. Not for this ship. Not for that ship. The port was longing. The port was longing. Not for this sea. Not for that sea. 
not for this sea, not for that sea, the port was longing. The port was longing, not for this and not for that, not for this and not for that. The port was longing. The port was longing, not for this and not for that. One island. Circle of brown, circle of blue, circle of brown, circle of blue, circle of earth, circle of earth, circle of sea, circle of sea, circle of brown, circle of brown, circle of blue, circle of blue, circle of earth, circle of earth, circle of sea, Tiger is like a butterfly, thought the tiger. Here today, gone tomorrow. He's like a bird, a hawk, forever vigilant. He is even a little like an elephant, ponderous, and basically gentle. Not too gentle, said a younger tiger. I only meant it as a metaphor said the old one. A tiger is like a number of things. <laughs> oh, again, Joyce said things about write as though each word where you were sending a telegram and each word cost a dollar. And anyone who's working in that direction, eliminating what's irrelevant and using the most economical means to an end that you have some idea about, you know, you, you know what you wish you could do with a painting or you know what you wish you could do with not a poem but with 
any poem, uh, you, you know that you wish you could get it all down to one word and have that one word really be very eloquent and very, all those things, timeless and everything else. If you could, you'd be happy. You can understand that you would be happy. And so you're always working toward the elimination of what's irrelevant. Is, 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 is. Is, 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 is. Is, is, is. Is, is, is. Never, 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 never. Which really the best one is still the first, this black and white film called New Film, which is based on new poems. And that was really a challenge. We were talking one night about uh, films and what both intrigued us was to do a film on a text that had never been written to be a film. Could we translate these abstract, rather minimal poems and in, in new poems into a film? And I just carried the book around with me for a year in the car. I would just drive around and, and let things coalesce. The whole idea was not to try to illustrate the poetry, obviously, just try to find correspondences in some fashion. And it took about two, almost three years of that kind of waiting for the right image or scene to connect with the poem and finally put them all together and, and turned it into a film. I think I would like to have seen more photography from him because I think he, he really is a born photographer too. That's what I think made him a great photographer. He just had a sense of, of people and, and the spotting of things. You know, it was uncanny. He just had a wonderful eye for, for who was going to be interesting to shoot and who wasn't, you know. What I like to do with a picture is still a business, same sort of thing you do with a poem, which is find a correspondence between outer and inner, you know, what your, say what your inner state is and what the outer situation is or what you see outside. If something that you see outside symbolizes something that, like symbolizes something that, that you feel inside, then, uh, then there's likely to be a, you know, an interesting, an interesting picture, uh, and it, it's, it's sort of like just a, maybe a, a moment of coincidence, where, say, the expression on somebody's face, and the thing that you imagine that this person is thinking or feeling, corresponds to something that's in, that's in your own feeling. And so I guess that, that amounts to sympathy or something. At that moment, if you take the picture, you're not only taking a picture of something objective outside, but you're taking a picture of, of an inner state of your own. And uh, I think that's what, uh, what can give a picture some life and, and, and also some value for you, at least. It, it represents something to you just the way a poem does. White stone, 
black stone, white stone, black stone, black stone, white stone, black stone, white stone, white stone, black stone, white stone, black stone. White stone, black stone, white stone, black stone, black stone, white stone, black stone, white stone. White stone, black stone, white stone, black stone, black stone, white stone, black stone, white stone. It has its own rhythm, his style, and it's very much encouraging music. It's almost uh, a little bit like his style is, is a bit music. It's a bit like jazz. And it's uh, not conflicting at all with my music, on the contrary. Black. Who's, who's working and happy in his work, uh, this is, all those considerations are really forgotten. What he's doing is playing. And he's, he's uh, you know, he's been playing well today, so he wants to tell you about it. And, and uh, but there's something, this business of playing is, is is, uh, musicians do it in, in jam sessions, really do it best. They do it sort of as a regular thing, that if you don't have some sort of joy in what you're doing in a jam session, you really shouldn't be there. And for the kind of art that I'm thinking of now and the way I think we're talking about, it's the same, that's the same thing, you know, that unless it's, it's really a pleasure to make and a pleasure to show your friends, a pleasure for them to see, um, it, uh, you don't, you're not quite sure why you're doing it. If it is all those things, I know why I'm, you know, then, then I know why anyone is doing it, because that's just living, it's, and it's, it promotes life, it sustains life, so that it's, it's, it's good stuff, I think. It, it justifies itself. All it has to be is, is that sort of poem or that sort of thing. And it's, it's got a place in, you know, in, in, in this little world anyway, in, 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 in any place. Whereas if it's trying to do something very important, I don't know, it is a different thing. It may, may actually do that very important thing if it's trying to. But, um, 
uh, I don't know how to I don't know how to think about that kind of that kind of uh, writing. Uh, if possible, you should just continue with this work. You are convinced it's good and it's right what you are doing oh, without. Uh, without being concerned if it's successful or not. It's naturally, most people cannot afford to to uh, work like this either. They have their li earned their living with something, or they are not uh, satisfied with so little as Bob does, for instance. Uh, and uh, that's why they have to make some efforts to be known so that they can also sell something, either books or, or music or paintings or sculpturing, sculpture and so on. But Bob, uh, he thinks, uh, if possible, you should, you should just continue what is good and right without being concerned if it's successful or not. That's his, somehow his philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, up to a certain point, if you're playing, the best thing that happens when you're playing is you become unselfconscious. And the worst thing that happens, one of the worst things that happens, if you be, get a lot of public notice and you get a public image, is that you you could start identifying with that image, and there goes your freedom and er everything else. Uh, so that if that's what I don't know whether it's either success or or failure, and oh, in, in that's that's bad on that. But um, getting to getting to accept some image of yourself that's been put on you is uh, is certainly an uh, obstacle. Uh, it's another part of that primal thing which uh, sends him back to beginnings always, you know, to operate from beginnings. He operates from beginnings. And when he can't get to beginnings or he sees there are no beginnings in the world, he goes back physically to them, to Greece, laughter, uh, um, watching, darkness versus light, uh, all that. It's just that um, if you don't have a feeling that anybody in the world, anybody in the universe is really interested in your writing, you might knock off for a few days and not write. <laughs> this intensity of his writing, uh, outstandingly, his sense of humor is is uh, brilliant. He can say things in a very few words that might take other people pages to say. It's very quick, very sharp, and I feel anybody who meets him is is aware of it. I think that all of it, to me, still all of it has to do with uh, finding a possible way of life, you know, for human beings on Earth. And I think a test of of whether it's going all right is if there is some kind of actual humor around that is is humor and isn't just bitter satire or something like that. I mean, when people can actually laugh. It's a, it's a sign that they may be living all right. They may be in a good situation, at least at the moment. Uh, and uh, I think that's what we're, what we're looking for. Uh, even in the Psalms, they talk about, you know, uh, tears being turned to laughter. Or, or uh, when, when there's laughter, there's a, it's a good sign for human life, I think. The first goodbye, the second, goodbye, the third, 
goodbye. The fourth, goodbye. The fifth, goodbye. The sixth, goodbye. The seventh, goodbye. The eighth, goodbye. The ninth, goodbye. The tenth, goodbye. The eleventh, goodbye. The twelfth, Goodbye. The hundred and twenty first. Goodbye. The hundred and forty fourth. Goodbye. The hundred and eighty ninth. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.